Growing up a few miles from America's shrine of golf, the Augusta National, a young man dreams of one day winning the Masters Tournament. And then, with an epic shot, on a perfect April evening, in a famous corner of that legendary place, the grandest dream of all comes true for Larry Mize. Eight thirty a.m. and a legendary trio opens the proceedings. Good morning. We've been waiting for this for a long time. Just entering the grounds, you can feel the electricity. Much of it is focused on the six-time winner and defending champion Jack Nicklaus, who is on the first tee. But the 1987 opening is a long way from the 1986 finish. I opened up in 1987 with probably the worst tee shot that I've ever hit off the first tee at Augusta National and went through the trees out into the crosswalk at number nine and played a one iron to the green. He'll start this tournament with a bogey. Curtis Strange, in contrast, gets off to a fast start. Burning three straight holes on the first nine, he goes on to finish in 71. As does two-time champion Tom Watson, another early starter. Larry Mize is fortunate to be out early, too, and he closes with a pair of birdies for a solidly played 70. John Cook was paired with Mize and does him one better to lead the tournament with 69, three under par. As the wind picks up in the afternoon, even the bear finds it hard to hold the super fast putting surfaces. His three wood at 15 finishes through the green from where he needs four strokes to get down. But his first round total is the same as last year, 74. Spain's Seve Ballesteros is another victim of the wind and the firm greens. This is his second shot at number 13. Seve finishes with a 73, one of the better afternoon scores. If staying on the greens is a challenge, look what can happen when you eventually arrive there. Even to a putter like Ben Crenshaw. Crenshaw and Norman just can't believe how slick the greens have become. That was for a birdie at 16. But Ben ends up with a bogey, and it contributes to an opening 75. So Norman's reaction when he makes his par is certainly understandable. Greg goes on to finish with a 73. After a long first day of wind and sun, syringing rather than soaking of the greens is the order of the evening. So John Cook and his pursuers will face much the same challenge in the second round. Friday morning, and the cup cutters at number three have done just right, if you're Roger Maltby. Roger opened with a 76, but today's out fast as well as early. This birdie helps him to the turn in 33. Then Crenshaw has regained all of his short game wizardry. At number eight, he plays a bank shot worthy of Willie Moscone. Then finished the round in 270 to get right back into contention. Larry Mize buried in the sand at number four. A wonderful par save and a 72 for the day. The local boy quietly remains a factor at two under. First round leader John Cook bunkered at seven and staying there contributes to an eventual 73 on the day. Meanwhile, Maltby was finishing even faster than he started with birdies at 16, 17 and here at 18. For the day's low round of 66, he's two under par. However, as expected, the international contingent is keeping pace. An eagle for Bernhardt Longer at 15, on his way to a two-round total of one under par. It's a birdie for Ballesteros at the par 4 11th, and he'll be at even par for the first two rounds. A three over 
Greg Norman, is the most notable exception to the foreign success. And he promises a change in strategy for the final 36. Curtis Strange has been aggressive all day, aggressive enough to lead at the halfway point. Yet he missed this birdie opportunity at 16, three putt at 17, and missed again for birdie at 18. His cold putter brings him from five under to three under, which allows nine more players to make the cut, including Bob Lewis, who comes to 18 needing this putt to become the only amateur to qualify for the final two rounds. And for leader Curtis Strange, the evening was not complete without some work on the part of the game that had deserted him late in the round. Saturday morning at Augusta National for Greg Norman, an obliging autograph. Playing number two, and as aggressively as he predicted, Norman records his first birdie of the day. He will go on to birdie the fourth, the fifth, and the seventh. Suddenly the sharp is one under par and very much a factor. Gary Player, the first foreigner to win the Masters, has it going today as well. Get over the water. Get over. Get over. He started with a pair of 75s, but today's 71 revives memories of his three victories here. Continuing his quest for his first green jacket, Norman hits a towering four iron to the 13th. An eventual birdie and a round of 66, three under for the tournament. I played a little bit more aggressive today. I putted well. All in all, I just uh, wanted to play aggressive around the golf, get myself back into contention. I think I've done it. Curtis Strange is still leading, playing number 15, as he was two years ago on the final day. Once again, his second shot finds the pond, but he completes the round in 73. Still at 15, and for Crenshaw, the putter is alive and well. That was his fourth straight birdie. Then one more at 18. Ooh. A 67, General Ben is at four under for the tournament. Savvy Bysteros' timing is pretty sharp too. He'll convert what is left for Birdie here at 14 and go on to finish at two under after three rounds. Larry Mize comes to 18, needing a birdie to match Seve's total. He's been playing solid golf in spite of bursitis in his hip. It's had him limping over the last few holes. It hurts to walk. It really doesn't bother my swing or anything, but it just uh, makes, me, makes me limp a lot, and it hurts to walk. But I've got some, uh, some muscle relaxers at home, so it should be. Normally, they take care of it, and it should be fine tomorrow. Mize for his second birdie in three days at 18. Now he's only two strokes off the lead, shared by Crenshaw and Roger Maltby. At 16, Maltby used his master's experience for another birdie. I had it once a few years ago, and I didn't hit it hard enough. <laughs> it came back down the hill. And uh, on this one, I said, make sure you give this one a good firm hit because you're up a pretty good slope. And it was going pretty good when it hit the hole, but it uh, fortunately caught the middle. However, a bogey at 17 dropped the Californian back into a tie with Crenshaw again with 18 holes to play. Anticipating the customary final hole thrills, the patrons stake their claim around number 18, a full 10 hours before the leaders are due. For Crenshaw, it's an up and down opening. He won putts the first five holes for pars and a birdie before going bogey bogey on six and seven. Playing with Crenshaw, Roger Maltby has been much steadier. 
Here he birdies number eight to take the lead out right at four under par. Meanwhile, on the second nine, where the Masters has so often been won or lost the final day, the defending champion, Eagles 13. It was his one long putt of the week, in stark contrast to his 1986 heroics. As the telecast is satellited around the globe, the tournament begins to assume its final form, as several challengers play themselves out of contention. This is Curtis Strange's second shot at 11. And he'll take four more from there, on his way to a double bogey six. Back at 10, longer misses for par. He's been struggling all day, and will also bogey 12, 14, and 15. But some prayers are being answered around Amen Corner. A birdie at 12 for Mize, and he's three under par. When Roger Maltby bogeys 10, it leaves a three-way tie for the lead. Crenshaw, Maltby, and Mize. Moments later, 11 unhinges yet another contender. My right foot was on a sand-filled divot, and I guess I lost my concentration momentarily and uh, didn't hit a very good shot. That's the worst shot I hit uh, all day. And the result is a bogey. Mize for birdie at 13. And he suddenly becomes a surprise lone leader at four under par. Back at 12, Greg Norman is now four strokes behind after bogeying four of the last six holes. You know, the only chance we've got to get him back into it is hit a good shot here and get confidence going again. And that was a crucial shot, yeah, it got me back right into the hundred things again. Birdie here begins the charge. At 14, Mize bogeys to drop back into a tie for the lead with Crenshaw. Yes! And the putter is still saving gentle Ben. This is for his par at 12. One hole ahead, Norman continues to close on the front runners. One and two, down and two more for a birdie, and the shark goes to two under for the tournament. Just one behind the leaders, Mize and Crenshaw. At 15, Mize airmails the green for his second straight bogey. We couldn't make up our mind between the four and the five. We went with the four, and it was the wrong club, but a little bit of a bad swing where I hit it a little left. And, you know, that that hurt too, but I looked up on the leaderboard on 15 green and saw nobody was doing anything, so I really didn't have anything to, any time to do anything but just keep playing. Same hole, Seve Ballesteros is at one under par, two strokes off the pace. And he will two putt from there for birdie to join Mize and Norman, one shot behind Crenshaw. The perils of the 1984 champion continue as he comes back from the brink yet again with another lengthy par saver at 14. Norman at 15. That's his third birdie in four holes. And as he checks the leaderboard, he is now tied with Crenshaw at three under. But at 16, the Aussies roller coaster round takes another turn. When I hit it off the club, I loved it. I was surprised even when it landed, I still thought it was in the back fringe. Ballesteros' second shot to 17. He's still one shot away from first place, and the holes are beginning to run out. Larry Mize at 18, needing to birdie it yet again. The ball was a little below my feet, and if I tried to hit anything easy, I would have missed it to the right. And I just 
ripped a nine iron. I couldn't have hit it any better right at it, hit a little pass and spun back to it. And I said, you know, birdie here or you're not going to be in it anyway. Norman for par at 16. And that cost him his hard-earned share of the lead as Crenshaw pars the 15th. Seve for birdie at 17. And finally, he has a piece of the lead, tied with Crenshaw at three under par. Mize for birdie at 18. And then there were three. Crenshaw, Ballesteros, and Augusta's own Larry Mize. Norman, 17, second shot. Crenshaw for birdie at 16 in the outright lead. Ballesteros must get down in two to retain his share of the lead. At 17, Norman putts to join the leaders at three under par. Savvy to save par and a chance for a playoff. Lasteros and Mize are in the clubhouse tied at three under. Crenshaw at 17 with a hard decision that leads to a heartbreaking bogey. My caddy Carl and I debated whether or whether not to, to hit a, a nine or a wedge, and he he wanted me to hit a wedge. But and I hit the littlest nine iron I know how to hit. It just took one one big skip. If I'd listened to my caddy, I, I might have been in the playoff. Playing with Crenshaw, Roger Maltby at 17. This is for Birdie to go two under and to keep his hopes alive. So after almost four full days of classic Masters drama, as so often before, it comes down to number 18. Greg Norman for birdie and his first Masters title. I still can't believe the putt missed the hole. I hit the putt with the speed that I thought I had to hit it with, and 18 inches, maybe two feet short of the hole, I thought I made it. I really did think, and I'll probably lie awake a couple of nights thinking, well, how did that putt miss the hole? So Norman finishes at three under to join Mize and Ballesteros awaiting the playoff in the Bob Jones cabin. As Maltby and Crenshaw arrive at 18, each with a putt to join that select group. Must be from a difficult position above the hole. He finishes one shot off the pace, but as he would say later, coming this close to a master's title will always be special to him. And finally, Ben Crenshaw, who birdied the difficult 18th on Saturday. So it all comes down to this. Two golfers, many regard as the world's best. <laughs> Along with homebred Larry Mize, in sudden death starting at number 10. Amazingly, Mize the third off the tee out drives by Steros and Norman with a perfectly positioned tee shot. Norman, who bogeyed 10 earlier in the day. He leaves his approach shot above the hole, just off the green. Lasteros leaves himself in an even more difficult position.
Off his perfectly positioned drive, Mize fires dead for the pin. And is almost perfect again. Ballesteros for birdie. And now, Norman. Greg will make what's left for his par. Larry Mize to win. He'll tap it in. Savvy to stay in the playoff. So Norman and Mize continue to 11 while a disappointed Ballesteros takes the lonely walk back to the clubhouse. Mize with a five iron on a hole he birdied on Thursday. Norman who bogeyed 11 earlier in the day. When I saw where Larry hit it on uh, the second hole of sudden death playoff, I, I liked my chances a lot. What Norman didn't know was that Mize had a pretty good read on his upcoming shot. I made a par putt from that line earlier, so I knew to play it up about a foot or so. You know, I said bump it in there, you know, try and give it a chance, but, if, you know, try and put it around the hole and make him have to make it to, to beat you. From about 140 feet. for his miracle. You know, the adrenaline's still pumping and I, uh, I'm still shaking a little bit. It's kind of like I'm walking on air right now. Uh, it just couldn't, uh, it couldn't be any better right now. Larry Mize, the first homegrown Masters champion and a boyhood dream comes true. You know, when you're a little kid, you always have the, you know, the one big dream that, that you, know, you hope would come true. And my dream when I was a little child growing up here finally came true, and it's unbelievable. <laughs>